Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Joel from Easy Engineering and welcome back to another video. So a few weeks ago, I was scrolling through some of the forums on Facebook and I saw someone asking a question about capturing MIDI and how it works and just, you know, trying to get a better understanding for it. And I remember when Ableton Live 10 was kind of first being introduced before it was released, they did mention this in an, uh, you know, in a, like a promo video. And I got really excited, but <laughs> honestly, up until a few months ago, I had had no idea how to use it and obviously if you just read the manual you will find out instantly but a lot of us are lazy a lot of us don't even think that there is a manual to Ableton so yeah like I just thought I would go in and just discuss a brief oversight into how to use it why to use it and just certain things that is included with you know capturing MIDI so over here we got just a blank new canvas set up I've just got one little synth loaded up and essentially what capturing MIDI is is it's it gives you the opportunity to kind of play around with your MIDI keyboard or your piano or whatever it is without recording and while you're doing that it, it is actually capturing the MIDI that is not being recorded and a lot of the times this is done maybe to to take away the pressure of the record or you know anything like that and sometimes we actually really do come up with a lot of our best ideas when that record button is off and to give you know a good advantage you know to you feeling a lot more free and feeling able to be a lot more creative or free in how you play your keyboard and everything like that this is what Ableton Live 10 does now I have to stress that this is not a feature in the light version of Ableton Live 10 it is only for the extended version but what you do is you know like like I said if you're just playing around with your MIDI keyboard and you're like oh shit that was actually um, I actually really like that pattern or I really like that chord progression but you didn't press record or you forgot to record or like I said you know you feel more comfortable with the record button off so what it does is it captures the MIDI for you so let me just play a simple thing over here Cool. All right. And then over here is where the capture MIDI uh, button is. And all you have to do is just press uh, the button once and it captures the MIDI over there. And the cool thing about this is if you have a blank canvas up, it will actually try and detect the tempo of the track that you're trying to play it at and as you can see over here that's what it's done right now and the best thing to do for it to be more accurate is to kind of play one or two bars but essentially the first bar is the kind of midi pattern that you want so essentially you want to end the capture midi sequence on the first bar of the, of the second phrase uh, it's just able to obviously give a full-on reading over here like you see you see over here so if you end over here there's your first bar essentially and it will be able to read the tempo a lot easier now this is only capable of doing this when it's a new canvas it's a new project there's no set tempo or anything like that the tempo usually only works between i think 80 and 160 bpm so if you think that it's a tempo outside of this tempo range then you're obviously going to have to adjust accordingly but this is the one key feature in ableton that i think is it's amazing you know we, when me and my friends we, when we're making music you know i'm usually the one that building the the percussion and the drum drum beats and the bass line you know within ableton and and he's at the back just kind of messing about on the piano having fun and this is what we use and and this is kind of what got me thinking a little bit more because I always remembered uh, you know about capturing MIDI I just never knew where it was or how to use it or how to you know implement it and it's it's helped us so much because like I said you know we're, we're a lot more free form um, there's no restrictions it's not like okay now we have to record and everything like that it's just more, more free form and if he comes up with something I just press the capture MIDI button and we go in and find it within the piano roll <laughs> And that's pretty much it. Now, the capture MIDI will work depending on which view you're in, if you're in session view or arrangement view. If you are in arrangement view, the capture MIDI will load up on the channel that is armed. So if all channels are armed, let's actually just duplicate this. And as you can see, it will... See, even the MIDI channel that doesn't have anything on it, will obviously capture the the midi over here also when you're in uh, sorry when you yeah when you're in session view 
it will once you finish capturing you know capturing your mini and you press a button it will obviously play it back for you uh, in arrangement view it's a little bit different so i'm just gonna unmute uh sorry unarm all of those and there you go it's not gonna play it back for you but it will put it into the arrangement view and this is a great way of you know just getting getting that free from going and the cool thing about when you're in session view is because it's gonna play it back it gives you the opportunity to kind of start overdubbing and everything like that um and it's just an amazing re really key feature that is kind of hidden but not really but a lot of people i don't think are utilizing it to its full capabilities and like i said when it's a new canvas it will always try and find the tempo that you're playing it at but when you have a new project open so let me just go and open a new project okay so now that we have our project open uh, i'm just going to open up i'm just going to open up an operator just for cool <laughs> Cool, now I'm gonna press capture MIDI and as you can see, the tempo has remained the same. It didn't change from 157, but the capture MIDI is there. And that's pretty much it for the video, really. I mean, I think it's a short, quick video, but it, it really highlights a key feature in Live 10. And if you have the light version and you want this feature, obviously you're gonna to have to upgrade, but it's an amazing feature. I think it's, it's really great, especially if you're creating a lot of melodic music and you want a little bit more of that freedom of choice to just really kind of go in and mess about without the idea or the restrictions of that record button. There you have it. I think it's a really cool tool, cool feature in Ableton 10. And I thought it would just be a good idea to kind of just briefly go through what it does and how to use it and if you've watched this video and you think i've missed something out please leave a comment down below because i don't you know i don't want to give half information i want to try and be as transparent and you know factual as i possibly can so if you enjoyed this video if you really enjoy using this technique or sorry using this feature please leave a comment like the video and if you want to see more of these videos then hit that subscribe button make sure that you hit that little bell button on the side to get a notification for when i release another video video but that is it for the video and until the next one have a great weekend